Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. To date, I have made two different versions of algae filters. The first one I really liked. It uh, had lots of great qualities, and it did a wonderful job. Unfortunately, it had a fatal flaw, and that is whenever I cleaned it, uh, there was a bounce back period where it took a little while for it to start uh, doing its job again. It wasn't very long, but it was a few days. And that was enough of a problem that I figured I would try making a version 2, which I did. And that's the slanted wall version I put together. And it is actually a good filter as well. Uh, it also unfortunately has a fatal flaw. And that is whenever there's a power failure, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, uh, that wall dries out. And then unfortunately that means it stops working and it actually takes longer for that one to come back than uh, the first version. And the funny thing about the first version is, it is perfectly fine with power failures. As long as it isn't too long, of course, because that water can, that's in there can get uh, fairly stagnant. But short-term power failures um, are perfectly fine, and I've never really had any issues with it. So I thought I would do a version 3. And that's going to be pretty much the first one, except I'm going to make them a little bit longer. You can see these uh, chambers are a little longer. And the other thing I want to do is I want to make two of them. So they're going to work in parallel and water's going to go through both of them. And of course I'll be able to clean one and work on it. And then as soon as it's back to working properly again, I can clean the other one. So it should eliminate, hopefully, all of the issues I've had with algae filters to date. So this is actually going to go uh, straight onto a client's tank. So I'm going to put this together. That's actually the reason why I've kind of stopped uh, the other series I've been doing uh, for this week, because I want to put this together. I need it uh, on there as quickly as possible, because I just uh, did a big fall cleanup on the tanks, and I just want this to get there before you know things start to build up again. So this is just the chamber. I mean, it's the same box. I mean, whenever I'm building a hob or uh, inside box filter or anything, uh, they all are just boxes. Uh, there are slight differences and whatnot, but so there they are. Those are both of them. Uh, they have the holes. Obviously, I haven't put the plumbing on yet, uh, but I do have the lids on. So now I am going to surround these in aluminum, uh, and I'm going to drill holes and miter it where I want uh, the pathways to go for the piping. Uh, I still haven't bought a better hole saw. You can see it wobbling there, but it's uh, if clamped properly, it still does a reasonable job. So I'm going to try and get this at least halfway done uh, in this video and then I'm going to finish it up uh, and hopefully by Friday I will have it up and running and on the client's tank or I should say actually hopefully I have that done by Thursday and then have the video for you guys on Friday I actually really do like algae filters uh, it's a very natural way of doing things and it's something that's actually uh, not very hard to take care of now this isn't done yet. This is the saw sled I've been working on, but I just couldn't resist. <laughs> I wanted to stick to this and see how it worked out. There's no clamps yet, obviously, because you know my hands are closer than I really would like them to be, but I just wanted to try it out because it actually is, is very smooth. And also the other thing I, need, I liked about it when I was uh, working with it is it's very easy to line up what I want to cut and where I wanted to cut it because the left-hand plate just skims the blade so it's very easy to line up things and then to get it done properly and there you go those are all sliced and cut and everything's ready these are the main plates that's where the lights are going to go on and obviously the other brackets there for just hold the framing and as of the last time i'll just be siliconing these together now you notice they're all scratched up i rough them up as much as possible because i want them to um, scatter light as much as I, as, uh, <laughs> as possible. Aluminum is pretty shiny to begin with, uh, but some of the stuff I've been using here, you can see like these pieces here, uh, this is just stuff I'm recycling. I had uh, some projects I built a while ago and uh, the client moved and I had uh, extra aluminum sitting around that was already cut up and bolted together. And this is the perfect kind of project for me to 
um, use that sort of stuff on. So all I did was I cut it all up. You'll see some extra holes there. That there obviously, it doesn't need to be any holes, uh, but it's, um, like I said, a great time for me to use this sort of stuff up. Now all you need to do here is once, uh, once it's roughed up like this, put a bead of silicone on both sides, squeeze it together, and it's very strong. Actually, I'm quite surprised how well silicone holds aluminum together. It's uh, something that I've actually used in other projects now, and it's uh, it's definitely not, it's obviously not welding at level, but it's more than strong enough for this sort of project for sure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make, uh, or sorry, set up so that these can cure. This is going to be, there's going to be two tops and two bottoms. Now, the bottoms obviously are going to end up being um, attached to the light panels and everything else, and the, and the top will just sort of fit lightly on top. You'll see as we go along. Uh, but I want to get them set up and cured so I can uh, do that as quickly as possible. So the nice thing about this particular type of aluminum is it has a nice shiny uh, finish on the outside and that's the part everyone will see so it's uh, really quite good for doing that sort of thing. Now all I need to do is hook up the LEDs. Now <laughs> I am going a little bit overkill on that. Uh, you don't really need much light. Uh, you can use uh, even like uh, really cheap LEDs for this. But I didn't want to go buy extra LEDs so I had a part of a roll still left from another project and this is going to be 10k which is obviously way more than it needs to be uh, you can use red light as well there's really no I mean there's no need to go high but this will obviously supply more than enough uh, spectrum for algae to grow and it'll obviously be more than bright enough especially with all the uh, the roughing up of the surface there to to reflect the light and get it scattering around it'll be quite bright in there when it's all ready to hook up uh for the, like in the next video what i'll do is uh i will show you looking inside it and show you it's actually really quite bright i haven't decided yet whether i want this particular one to be just a straight algae filter or i may actually uh, do the chato again i actually really like how the chato works uh it does provide an extra kind of almost like a mechanical filtration if any of you have ever kept uh, java moss in an aquarium and then you go to move it and you see uh, a lot of stuff that's built up underneath it it does that kind of effect it's kind of a not quite like a dead zone but it is a spot where a bit of settling can happen and uh, it does actually increase the amount of filtration that happens which is uh, kind of cool too now i see me measuring here but this is pretty much just ballparking it. I just wanted to make sure that they're, they look roughly the same. And there's no real uh, magic number as far as where these could go or should go. It's just trying to get them to look relatively even. And uh, so the light pretty much gets everywhere. So I'm going to now wire these up. Uh, these are obviously DC. Uh, one thing I have to do first, though, is these are waterproof. There's a silicone coating on uh, these LED tapes, and it is a bit of a nuisance getting that off. Uh, <laughs> it does take a bit of effort, and sometimes if you don't quite do it right and you try to do uh, like to, to uh, solder them, it won't stick because there's still a little layer of silicone on there. So you can see me wiping those quite a bit. So I started to do this. I started filming this, and then... I've, obviously I got the camera on uh, the right hand side now because I figured it would I would not block the filming of it as much on this side uh, as it turns out my hand is right in the way so I'm gonna this, this is just gonna be a short clip here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re, uh, uh, set it up a little differently and can actually give, give you a closer look at it because uh, I just want you to see how it goes because I mean, you can't see anything here I mean you got a wonderful picture of the back of my hand, which is, uh, you know, not what you're here for. So I've done the first one. I reset up. I promise that uh, I'll get my fingers out of, way, out of the way here in a second. And I'll show you the soldering. I'm not a very good solderer, uh, but it's uh, more than enough for me to be able to get these things to, uh, stuck together. Then I'm going to give a quick test of this. Uh, I'm going to fire it up and uh, make sure it works. I always do that whenever I do this anyway, simply because uh, you want to make sure you soldered it properly. And then 
uh, what I'm going to do is that's probably much going to be the end of this video because it's already getting close to uh, 12 minutes and I try to keep these shorter. And then what I'll do is on Friday I will have this all built and uh, ready to run and hopefully installed. And uh, that will be the end of this, uh, this little series. I will probably do updates on it uh, as time goes on because uh, I really like these things. Uh, but as far as, you know, it, you've already seen what it works, uh, how it works. And I just want to show you guys again um, how the stability works. See if I can get the flow to flow properly between the two of them and that sort of thing. And that's probably what the update will be. So here we're going to do, we're going to do a quick test. Uh, <laughs> it's actually quite bright. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, that'll be the end of this video. And as I said many times before, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And what we'll do is, like I said, I'm going to get back to some of the other things I've been doing. Um, there's actually lots on the go, and that's kind of a problem. This is a bit of a skip ahead. I will show you how I got to this point, on, uh, fr obviously, on Friday's video. And then, like I said, do the rest of the plumbing and everything. Uh, I will get to all those other projects. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of free time, so uh, they, these things, when, when work comes up like this and I need to do a particular job, I kind of have to do that first, and then I'll get back to the other ones, I promise. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.